Okay guys, today we're going to look at the leopard gecko. Is this the best starter reptile? Is this the easiest, one of the easiest reptiles, one of the best starters, one of the most low maintenance? Okay, so here's short answer. Are you thinking about getting a leopard gecko? Do you want, or are you thinking about, hey, I want to get a reptile, but I want them to be easy, carefree, but I want it to look cool? Then the answer is D, all of the above. These guys are super friendly, super easy to take care of, super low maintenance, need a super low maintenance enclosure, um, and are just fun to have, and they look cool. Because they come in a whole bunch of different patterns with either they're spotted or they're banded or they're white or they're light blue or they're they got more black dots on them or they're all yellow and they have no dots and or they have translucent hands and it there's so many different color varieties one two they're super cheap so if you're thinking about hey i want to get a starter reptile but i don't want to spend a thousand dollars for a parsons chameleon and it's too hard for me to take care of it okay great Pick up a leopard gecko for around twenty dollars and throw some money into an enclosure. Um, if you've got a big plastic storage bin, you know you could put them in there. Although I like in uh, at least if it's clear so you can see in. But a twenty gallon empty reptile enclosure, an old fish tank, all of that works. So I'm gonna hit a little bit about him, his needs, and then we'll hit about the enclosure and then why you should get one. So they are just super friendly. I mean, just so friendly. If you just look at this, he's just passive. He just wants to walk around, explore. Uh, so you can, you don't have to worry about, hey, if I'm going to let him out a little bit, crawl on my desk or my son, put him in my son's bedroom or here or there. It's not a vicious animal. It's not an animal that's going to bite. It's an animal that, uh, if anything, is going to be a little afraid at first of your kids or your husband or your wife whoever friends that come over when you first get them depending on the age because they're not used to maybe human interaction so don't have to worry about any aggressiveness there's none two but i want an animal i want a reptile that's sweet right everyone wants something cool do i want something that's just going to burrow in the ground and i'll see it once a month when i feed it not really so these guys obviously have amazing colors that you can get on them like I said and you have the ability to be able to pick them up and hold them and to pet them and they feel so amazing because one their their underside is super soft and then their top though is kind of bumpy like a, like a bunch of not scales but just little rough little dots every once in a while part of a texture it doesn't hurt the hand maybe like a a piece of sandpaper uh, so you can pick them up you can pet them you can feel them your kids are gonna like them now the one thing is you want to get trust with your leopard gecko because see how the way I'm holding them I feed them every day leopard geckos like some reptiles can drop their tails so if he gets too scared his uh, fight or flight would activate in his case it's flight he would disconnect right here kind of shoot his tail off like a mini missile because his tail is completely full of water. So if you see a leopard gecko and their tail is not fat and bulged, they're dehydrated. That's where they store all their excess water. If you see a nice plump tail like this, it's full of water, it means he he's, doesn't have any thirst, he's doing good. So what happens? They fire their tail off like a little mini missile. Their tail will grow back, but it will never grow back the same color. It will typically grow back just a solid color, um, palish white or sometimes even yellow, depending on the color of the leopard gecko. During the time the leopard gecko doesn't have a tail, you worry about dehydration because they no longer have this huge water sack so that they can store excess water. So as long as you've got a big water bowl, or not a big water bowl, but a water bowl that he can at least soak in and you know drink his thirst in as much as possible because he's going to be drinking from it more often since he can't store it uh you're fine but it's really hard to get a leopard gecko to shed its tail in captivity because they're tame and they've been seeing you every day and hearing you and you've been feeding them uh so that's hard to do uh feeding i hand feed mine i just take a little dubia roach and i hold it in front of him and he comes and he gets it typically it's about two or three 
uh, and that's it. So you can you can hand feed them. You can drop food in their enclosure and watch him stalk it out because he'll do that. I typically take the dubia and I drag it in front of him and like up onto his cave and have him hunt it down. You know, give him that stimulation, uh, that enrichment that they want. So that's fine. So enclosure. What do I need? Why is he so easy to keep compared to a chameleon or a plated lizard or a blue tongue skink uh, or a Chinese water dragon or a pixie frog? You know, all these other what I would say are beginner reptiles. Well, so his needs, his needs in his enclosure are so small. He does not need a UV light. Why? Because these guys come out again some, most of the time when it's darker out. So he spends most of his day in his cave or in, well, in one of his caves, and we'll hit on that later, or when he is out, it's later in the evening and lights would go down in the wild. They're almost all the time only out at night. So you don't need a UV light. What do you need? You need just a few things. You need heat mat. So these guys like to lay down on a heat heat source so when you have your enclosure you would put a heat mat either under tank or inside tank on one side and put a cave on top of it so when the leopard gecko wants to be warm and safe he will go on that heat mat and he will go in that cave uh, a lot of times after he eats he'll eat two three roaches maybe four roaches and he'll go and just spread himself out completely on the heat mat not in the cave just on the outside of the heat mat since I have a portion of it under the cave and some of it outside the cave uh, and he'll just lay on it and the heat will go on his stomach and help him digest all his food so you need one side with heat the other side is your cool side so if he's getting and you you need a you need a cave on the cool side so if he's getting too warm too hot and he wants to cool off they can thermoregulate on their own so when he feels that he'll go to the cool side now if he wants to be hidden while on the cool side that's why you have a cave over there so he can go inside the cave can be anything can be a, a cool whip container that you turn upside down and you cut a hole out of it just depends on how nice you want it to look functionality wise you could put you know little tupperware containers with openings cut into them that he can go under that are blacked out or just not not clear so he's got that he's got that what else does he need well we hit on earlier he needs a water bowl or water dish in this case i would say because you would like to get a dish that, if need be, the leopard gecko could lay in. So if he was getting so super hot or something happened and he was becoming dehydrated, he can go and he could lay in the water dish. Mine has never done that. He climbs up his water bowl, drinks his fillness of water, puts you know just his mouth in, and then leaves. But you have it there for the priority. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Those are the necessities. Now... You have a few options that you get to do. So tank bottom, what do you want? You can put down their reptile carpet if you want it to look nice. Um, you could also put down their newspaper. That way it's really easy to clean. He doesn't burrow. He doesn't need to go underneath. He doesn't need humidity from the, from the ground, so you're fine. I prefer newspaper for leopard geckos or paper towel, uh, and I'll tell you why. So another thing about why these guys are so easy is they are essentially potty trained. Wait, what? What does that mean? So they will find one spot. In this case, he goes to the bathroom in his cool side cave in the very corner, and that's it. So I have a, a note card that I use now, a little index card that I put down in the corner that he uses for the restroom. And that way, once he's used it a few times, I can just pick that whole card up, throw it in the garbage, put a new one down. So he's not going to be pooping and peeing all over the cage. It's going to be secluded in one area. And once you find out what that one area is, you can make it super easy like I did with like an index card. So that's awesome. Then the other part is just clean up of newspaper. If it does get dirty and whatnot, you just pick it up, throw it out. So that's simple. If you want it to be a little nicer, you can put reptile carpet down. They, you know, can get it in brown, you can get it in green. The key is he, the gecko, he or she, they don't care. So they do not care. So at that point, it's just what do you like? Whether you have, what, what your hides are, what your bottom is, they don't care. So another optional thing that you can put up in there is I have a little food dish with uh, calcium powder in it because leopard geckos will lick calcium powder. 
So this is really good for them because they can get calcium, even though I dust his roaches. It's just a little treat when they want, they'll go up and lick it, um, which is really nice. So if you want, you can have a little dish in there with calcium. The last optional thing is a humid hide. So this is my upside down Cool Whip container with an opening cut open with a piece of paper towel in it that I spray water onto from a little mister bottle. So when leopard geckos shed, they, like a few reptiles, prefer to eat most of their old skin to get the resources of it because in the wild the resources are scarce so they're used to, hey, my old skin has vitamins on it, might as well eat the, new, the old skin that way I can keep all those vitamins rather than just throw it to the side like a chameleon. So when they start to shed, they'll typically go in their humid hide because it's humid, right? And it will just help the shed come off. Um, and it makes it easier for you. This is not a need, but it's you know one of those things that's greatly, greatly, highly recommended. It helps them shed, it helps them feel safe while shedding, uh, and it helps you prevent any stuck shed. When the next time Orion here goes through his shedding phase, I'll show you because he always gets shed stuck on his face and his mouth, and I'll show you how to remove that. Again, that's super easy, and it's kind of nice because it's something to, to do with your gecko. I feel like it's a nice little bonding thing. So guys, if you were thinking of getting one and I didn't answer a question or you have more specific questions, you can just shoot them down in the comments. I will go through them, I'll read them, I'll respond to you, help you try to decide if this is the right lizard for you or not. Again, I'd say yes, because it's so simple. They're so passive, they're so nice, uh, and they're so easy to take care of. Okay, this has been Animal One Guy. You guys already knew that, because you're here in my video. Take care, everybody.